Good evening, um, Excellency, the Ambassador of Switzerland to Canada, Olaf, uh, Olaf Gelsen, and the Honorable Bruce Ralston, Minister of Forests, and for the Consular Corps, His Worship Mayor Ken Sim, President Johnston, dear Consul General's colleagues, esteemed guests, on behalf of the Swiss Consulate in Vancouver, I would like to welcome you to the opening event of the second Swiss Innovation Fest, Vancouver, with the focus on clean tech. My name is Thomas Schneider. I'm the Consul General of Switzerland in Vancouver, and I will be your host tonight. I respectfully acknowledge that we have gathered today on the unceded traditional territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam nations. The Consul General of Switzerland in Vancouver hosted the first Innovation Fest in 2022. That pioneering edition highlighted the strong partnership between Triumph, Canada's particle accelerator, and CERN, the largest particle physics laboratory in the world located in Switzerland. The first festival demonstrated that scientific collaboration is more important than ever, and we decided to bring the event series back in 2024. This time, we're focusing on clean tech. Clean tech innovation, a topic of high interest to the communities to both Switzerland and Canada. And we are grateful to do so with a leading institution, the Simon Fraser University, our host tonight. So with that, I would like to give the floor to Ambassador of Switzerland to Canada and the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. <laughs> Olaf Gelsen. So originally from Colony in the canton of Geneva, Mr. Gelsen joined the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs in 1994. In the course of his career, Ambassador Gelsen was posted in Moscow, New Delhi, Warsaw, Brussels, and several times in Bern. In 2014, Mr. Gelsen returned to Bern as ambassador for cross-border cooperation and relations with neighboring countries since 2015. He has been ambassador of Switzerland to Liechtenstein. Before joining the Swiss embassy in Ottawa in 2022, he was head of mission and ambassador in Athens, Greece. Esteemed guests, on behalf of the Embassy of Switzerland in Canada, I would like to welcome you to the opening event of the Swiss Innovation Fest 2024. It is a pleasure to see so many long-standing partners and friends attend um, the opening of the second edition of the Swiss Innovation Fest. During the next two weeks, we will bring the science and society closer to demonstrate how clean tech innovation impacts the present and future. As a highly technological industrialized country, Switzerland has leading clean tech clusters with a particular focus on AI, robotics, personalized health, blockchain, and clean and efficient business solutions. Western Canada is also known for clean tech development and innovation. With 10 out of 13 Canadian companies in the 2024 Global Clean Tech 100 list coming from the two provinces of British Columbia and Alberta. There are indeed plenty of opportunities for cooperation among trusted partners in the fields of clean tech innovation. First, let me welcome the Honorable Bruce Ralston, Minister of Forests um, and the Consular Corps, um, tonight to tonight's event. Your support to the Swiss representation in Vancouver, the Swiss community in BC, and the Consular Corps is very important to us. Thank you for that and for your presence. I would also like to welcome our special guest this evening, His Worship Ken Sim, the Mayor of Vancouver. I would also like to introduce to you our exceptional partners who've made this festival possible. Uh, tonight's host, the Simon Fraser University, one of Canada's leading universities and a strong advocate for science and innovation. I want to highlight SFU's commitment to addressing climate change and its remarkable sustainable sustainability research. In addition, we share SFU's focus on bottom-up community-based innovation and we host the Swiss Innovation Fest series of events to make science and technology more accessible and relevant to diverse communities. I'm grateful to Dr. Joy Johnson and her faculty and her staff for this collaboration. 
Not only is SFU welcoming us on their campus tonight, they are also hosting panel discussions and the Can Tech Save the World exhibition, uh, which I encourage you to explore during the next two weeks. I would also like to welcome our industry partner, ABB Canada, to this event. With a hist history of excellence stretching back for more than 140 years, ABB is a technologi technologi technology leader, enabling a more sustainable and resource efficient future. I would like to thank our organizing partner, ISM Arts and Culture, a creative consultancy that drives innovation, and its founder, Scott Mallory, for the incredible support of our team at the Swiss Consulate General in Vancouver. Finally, I would like to thank our partners, Foresight Canada, Switzerland Global Enterprise, Present Switzerland, Canadian Innovation Network, Volition, and the BPOC Foundation. I'm very thankful, thankful for your support and presence tonight. Canada and Switzerland have a long-standing, strong, and diverse relationship that spans across trade, investment, research, and innovation. Exactly one year ago, in April 2023, Federal Councillor Guy Parmelin and the Honourable François-Philippe Champagne, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, renewed the bilateral agreement and committed to strengthening research partnerships in science, technology and innovation between Switzerland and Canada. While collaboration under, this, under the partnership is encouraged across all disciplines, specific research priorities for 20, the period 2023-2028 include climate and sustainability the focus of the second Swiss Innovation Fest. Other topics are life sciences and health, quantum science and technology, and artificial intelligence. So there's potential for many future innovation fests. Today's event is another example of how Canada and Switzerland are advancing international collaboration in science and technology to address global environment, environmental challenges. Both Switzerland and Canada have announced their goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2020, 2050. I hope that the next two weeks will be the platform for new collaborations that will lead to discoveries in both countries, bringing us closer to achieving this ambition, ambitious goal. I wish you all a pleasant evening and an exciting Innovation Fest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your words and for highlighting these existing connections between Switzerland and Canada. Now, I'm honored to welcome the Honorable Bruce Ralston, Minister of Forests, uh, to tonight's event. Minister Ralston is also the minister and responsible for the Consular Corps, which we are very grateful for. Uh, he's really facilitating the connections between the consul, the consuls generals, the honorary consuls, and the BC government. Thank you so much for that. Um, just a little bio about you. Uh, Minister Alston. <laughs> now, Minister Alston is an advocate for innovation in the province technology sector and brings his experience and knowledge, uh, knowledge to the sector to his current cabinet portfolio, where he is focused on re revitalizing and modernizing the forest sector. His priorities include the sustainable management and conservation of BC's forests in the face of climate change, while ensuring a competitive and sustainable future for communities, First Nations workers and businesses. The floor is yours. Great, thanks very much, uh, Consul General Snyder. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Ambassador Kilson and his wife, uh, Caroline, uh, um, the mayor, Mayor Ken Sim, who I seem to be seeing pretty well everywhere these days. <laughs> uh, well, I live in Surrey, so maybe a bit of a stretch. President Joy Johnson of SFU and, and friends. Um, it's a, thank you to the Consul General for organizing the Innovation Fest and hosting it, and for your sponsors for making this event possible. It's also, I want to acknowledge and uh, express my gratitude for being here on the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples, and also acknowledge uh, just one building over as SFU's Venture Labs. Uh, the president pointed out to me that it wasn't exactly in this building, but one building over. And, uh, and also SFU's many ventures in innovation, but particularly the Hydrogen Hub, which is something that I 
uh, had some part in when I was the Minister of Energy. I'm also uh, uh, honored to, although uh, this is at SFU downtown, I'm really more of an SFU Surrey person, you know, all politics being local. But um, I have the honor to pass on greetings from Premier David Eby and the government of British Columbia. So as I said, I, I attended the uh, inaugural festival in 2022, and I'm really thrilled that it, you've brought it back. I know this year's edition will be just as successful. It's an exciting opportunity, uh, bringing together an extraordinary range of uh, leaders, thinkers, and entrepreneurs who are shaping our future. Events like this are an opportunity to discuss issues and opportunities that unite us rather than divide us, to collaborate and share best practices. It's also clearly an opportunity, as we can see from some of the displays, uh, to showcase, uh, to educate, and exchange ideas. Switzerland, like British Columbia, boasts uh, breathtaking landscapes, uh, the magnificent the majestic Swiss Alps, the lush green valleys, and its shimmering lakes are world renowned. The exhibition Can Tech Save the World goes beyond Switzerland's natural beauty to showcase its commitment to clean technology, a commitment that British Columbia also shares to protect our rugged coastline, ancient forests, snow-capped peaks, and abundant farmland. This exhibit not only features uh, innovative initiatives, but challenges all of us to find innovative solutions and build a sustainable future. One way to accomplish this is through exchanges and cooperation. And uh, in my ex experience in the, in the, with the Consider Corps, uh, there is a, the opportunities for collaboration between uh, nations that wish to cooperate is, uh, is immense. And so this is uh, an opportunity worth taking and worth building upon. Switzerland has a propensity for innovation and is home to renowned research institutes and expertise, which is why Canada and Switzerland, uh, the Consul General referred to that, and I think the ambassador did as well, signed an updated joint statement on science, technology, and innovation last year, enhancing already strong cooperation in those domains. Can tech save the world? Good question. Our jurisdictions are experiencing the devastating consequences of climate change. Rising temperatures are st stripping our ski slopes of snow. Intense wildfires are ravaging our forests. Last year, as many of you will know, in British Columbia, we had the worst fire season on record. These are stark reminders that urgent and significant action needs to be taken. Innovation is a key to meeting climate commitments and transitioning to a more environmentally sustainable and low carbon future. British Columbia continues to lead on climate action, I'm proud to say, and we're on our way to meeting our climate targets, even as our population and economy have grown significantly. Uh, British Columbia is a clean energy leader. 98% of the power generated in our province comes from clean or renewable sources. We're also blessed with a rich supply of natural resources. Critical minerals like nickel, cobalt, and copper are vital components in building and developing electric vehicles, wind turbines, and solar power. Creating innovative solutions to reduce emissions, improve competitiveness, and support technology is essential to growing a strong and secure economy. That's why as a part of our Stronger BC Economic Plan, we launched what we call the integra Integrated marketplace. Test beds are located at YVR. That's the, uh, for those not familiar with the jargon or the acronym, that's the Vancouver Airport, uh, the Prince Rupert Port Authority, and the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority. The integrated marketplace works with industry partners to bring their business challenges to market with local innovators to solve business problems, increasing, including increasing supply chain resiliency, efficiency and productivity, and reducing emissions. Through this initiative, British, Columbia's, British Columbia companies can test homegrown innovation locally and export globally, a win for everyone, people, business, and the environment. The British Columbia government uh, is uh, focused on growing technology and innovation here in our province. By working together, we pave the way for a future where progress and environmental responsibility go hand in hand. Once again, my thanks to the Consulate General of Switzerland and your sponsors for bringing organizations and people from science, technology, industry, academia, and the arts together. 
I wish this event every success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Ralston, for your remarks and for joining uh, this evening. Um, let me say also welcome to our online audience. <laughs> so we're live streaming this event on YouTube. I hope someone is watching on the other end. <laughs> But in any case, welcome. So, and with that, I would like to pass it on to Mayor Ken Sim. Ken Sim is a born and raised Vancouverite, a passionate entrepreneur who saw a need for improved community health and home care, which led uh, to him starting his first of two Vancouver-based companies. Nurse Next Door, home health care services in 2001. Then, 10 years later, in collaboration with his wife and other partners, Ken launched Rosemary Rock Salt Bagels, a successful Vancouver chain with a number of storefronts across the city. Ken is excited to see Vancouver's transformation into a vibrant, prosperous and safe and business-friendly city, representing a future of growth and opportunity for all. Welcome. change my speech now that I know this is streaming I'm gonna to have to cut a lot of it out <laughs> I'm not kidding by the way um, welcome uh, it's actually an honor to be here at the second Swiss Innovation Fest and before I get started I do want to acknowledge a bunch of people and well the fact that we're hosting today's session on the unceded territories of the Musqueam the Squamish and Swillatooth First Nations I do want to thank them for their generosity and their hospital uh, hospitality and the love and the care that they show this land that we get to live work and play on and I really do think it's incumbent upon all of us to unlearn what we've learned in the past and learn the true history as to what's happened on these lands and I tell you if we do that we're going to build an incredibly bright future full of kindness and empathy and love not just for everyone here and everyone that visits Vancouver but for future generations to come and so super excited about that I also do want to acknowledge um you know Bruce did is Bruce still here I think he just stepped out yeah He's, uh, he's super busy. Uh, they've been great partners. Um, Bruce and his team and, and the province, they've been great partners. And we talk about, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to get into this a little bit, but when we travel the world trying to, you know, um, let everyone know that Vancouver is open for business, and especially on the tech side, um, they've been partners with us going to Austin, going to Toronto, just to name a few, to attract business here. So they've been great. Joy, I want to acknowledge you. It pains me to say this um, because I'm a UBC uh, grad. Oh, this really pains me because my sister went to SFU. Um, but SFU is doing an amazing job. Um, they're actually, I, I, I can't say this because it's on streaming. <laughs> um, but let's just say you guys are doing an amazing job. And the foresight that it took for SFU to come and be the first major university um, with no disrespect to, disrespect to any other universities, to, but to come down here um, shows a lot of leadership. And it's, it's noted. Uh, Look, it's exciting to be in a room full of entrepreneurs and innovators and creators and uh, policymakers. You guys are literally shaping the future. And it's, 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 you can feel the buzz in this room and you can feel that there is an energy to create a better future for all of us. Um, and uh, actually, sorry, I forgot. I do want to do a, a quick shout out to uh, the Consul General, Thomas. It's great seeing you again. And the Ambassador, Olaf, and, and your wife, Caroline. Thank you um, for making the trek uh, from sunny Ottawa to uh, Vancouver. <laughs> I know it must have been hard. Um, and But uh, all joking aside, thanks for fostering a great uh, partnership and relationship and building those ties between Switzerland and Canada and in particular Vancouver. We really appreciate it. Um, I don't know if, um, well, I, I'm sure this room knows, um, but we have um, an incredible Swiss community here that is contributing big time to the city of Vancouver and we appreciate it and we love the Swiss community. So uh, thank you for showing up and supporting the community as well. And I look forward to all the incredible things that we're gonna build together. Okay, so enough of the thank yous. Uh, I just wanna highlight a couple of things. First of all, um, tech is back in uh, BC, baby. Like it's, uh, and we are open for business. It's actually been here for a while. Um, a couple of, you know, fun facts. Uh, BC, so not just Vancouver, but the region. Uh, we have the fastest growing tech community in all of Canada. Uh, we have 194,000 people that are working in the tech community, uh, uh, specifically in tech. 
Um, on top of that, Vancouver is a hub. Vancouver is a global leader. When you look at, uh, let's say, the, the film and TV um, industry production facilities, we have the third largest um, production facility ecosystem in North America. When it comes to gaming, we're, we're, we have a cluster which is uh, leading the world. When you look at augmented reality and virtual reality, we're the number two center in the world, and we have the highest concentration of augmented reality and virtual reality talent on the planet, we're kicking butt in the blockchain. And so, sorry, I, I get excited about this. Um, so I, I'm a patron of Abundance 360. I was actually down in um, in LA a couple of weeks ago um, talking on stage about AI and what we're doing in the city of Vancouver. And for people that don't know what Abundance 360 is, it's the world leading um, sort of a forum for what's happening in technology. And so it's led by Peter, Diamanda, uh, Peter Diamandis, who founded the X Prize. And there's like um, Eric Schmidt, Elon Musk, um, you know, everyone was there speaking on stage and we're talking about the future of this planet. And I can tell you the future is incredibly bright um, when it comes to AI. It, it's going to transform the world and it's not going to be 10 years away. It's literally doubling every five months and humans can't see exponential change. We're going to wake up in five years and this entire planet's going to look different. It was exciting to see that for the first time ever, solar energy is less expensive than fossil fuels. I want you to think about that. We're at a clean tech conference and we already have our answer. Now we have to figure out the storage issue. That's the bigger issue, but we're gonna figure that out. And it's this world is gonna transform. And I'm excited because you're gonna be leading the charge here. And so I know we have a lot of guests uh, from out of town and I know we have a lot of people that have chosen Vancouver. And I can tell you, um, we want to see you successful. And so at the city of Vancouver, I can tell you, while we're in office, and our office is bigger than one person, so it's bigger than me. There's a whole office of us, and I'm just one small part of the team. We understand technology. We love our planet. We love the environment. Um, and we're going to do everything we can. And we actually have a deep understanding of technology. And so um, uh, the focus at the city of Vancouver, we've had a hackathon um, with Microsoft to use AI and see how it can actually, you know, how we can utilize AI. And they, they did, um, their project was, you know, um, uh, mitigating flood damage um, as, you know, temperatures rise and, you know, our shorelines um, uh, get reset, as an example. Uh, we're using AI um, um, in the VPD when it comes to, you know, um, um, predicting where property crime is going to happen before it happens. Uh, we've hired, like we have a mandate of hiring a chief um, uh, AI officer. And by the way, anyone who has a company, if you don't have a chief AI officer or you don't uh, have plans to have one, I can tell you right now, you will be out of business in the next five years. And so, um, not to scare you, it's an opportunity. It is absolutely awesome. And so all I, all I wanna share with you, I didn't wanna end on that note, the fear or whatever, that the point is people are afraid of AI and I think those are the wrong lenses. First of all, it's gonna happen whether we like it or not. And I think we should all live in a world of abundance where we can use this as a tool and we can do things that weren't even possible or even imaginable five years ago. And it's an exciting future and you'll have our support at the city of Vancouver. We understand it and we'll support you and we will break down the barriers so you can actually apply your trade in here, Vancouver. So if you don't have a business here and you're thinking of moving somewhere, come to Vancouver because we're open for business and we love you. Um, so thanks for coming and uh, super excited about seeing you guys change the world for the better. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> thank you for your words and thank you for joining us tonight. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker, the president of Simon Fraser University, Dr. Choi Johnson. Professor Choi Johnson is the 10th president of S uh, at SFU. Prior to being elected as a president, she held the vice president research and international title at SFU, a role she has held since 2014. Under her strong leadership, SFU, uh, SFU's research income has grown from 100 million to, in 2014 to 160 million today, making it the fastest growing research income at any university in Canada. 
Professor Johnson is an elected fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. Welcome, President. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, I just want to say to those of you in the back, there are seats here if you want to come and sit down. We're going to be a while. Make yourself at home. It's great to have you. Uh, on behalf of Simon Fraser University, I want to welcome everyone um, to this amazing event. It is great to be here. And I want to begin by saying thank you to those of you who have recognized the land that we're on, um, the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. You know, it is so important. And so thank you for your words, um, um, Mayor Sim, about, um, you know, our the, the need to recognize these lands. So thank you very much. We are so excited to invi invite uh, and to welcome all of you to the Swiss Innovation Fest. And I want to say thank you in particular to the Swiss um, Consulate General. Um, thank you so much um, um, for, for selecting us, if you, to be a partner in this. Uh, I, I really am so very grateful to you, um, but also very, very grateful um, to Ambassador Chelson for your work um, coming to see us and really sparking um, this great opportunity um, to think together about the ways in which we can work um, to address really a global challenge of our time, and that is how we will address uh, the climate emergency. Uh, it's great to be here on our SFU downtown campus. And yes, I agree, Mayor Sim, it's wonderful to have this presence downtown. We count on uh, the presence uh, here to help build opportunities for all of us. And I have taken note that I need to think about an AI lead um, at Simon Fraser University. I could not be here maybe in, ten, in five years. If I don't, I have taken note. Uh, the other thing, and I will say very lightly, part of the uh, wonderful thing about doing an event like this is that I just want to point out that we share colors, Canada, Switzerland, and Simon Fraser University. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is a match made in heaven and wonderful to be here today together. So at SFU, one of our priorities is indeed um, to think about the ways in which we can engage in global challenges. And I have to admit, and you all know this, in the past few years, we have seen just so many challenges present to all of us, from healthcare um, to thinking about some of the issues related to preserving our democracies to the climate crisis. And I do believe that solving these challenges is going to require all of us, universities, um, our, you know, people working in government, industry, um, people working in the consular corps, working together to think about how we can solve these, these pressing issues. And I, I do believe that's part of what SFU is all about. Um, Post-secondary institutions really have a unique role to play. Uh, we bring together knowledge generation, so great technology, research, education, and also public engagement. At SFU, we believe that it's really important for all of us to be engaged in our community, working together to solve problems. So uh, it's not only a responsibility, I believe it's a moral obligation to use our resources as a publicly funded institution to serve our communities here in British Columbia. And I think that's going to be showcased in a, in a beautiful way through these events um, that's happening under the fest this month. Uh, we have a number uh, of, of events happening, including the public panel session on smart and sustainable cities, co-hosted by SFU um, uh, Morse JWAS Center for Dialogue, and that's happening this coming Thursday. And on the international front, SFU is proud to have a strong um, research partnerships with Switzerland. And I'm really excited about the conversations that we're going to spark over the next few days, thinking about ways that we can work together with our colleagues in Switzerland um, to address areas of clean tech and climate innovation. Um, as SFU's um, Dr. Alicia Main is going to explain shortly, thank you very much, um, tonight's fire, um, and she'll be a part of the fireside chat this evening, SFU's researchers have been advancing a clean tech future for more than two decades. And I do believe that we continue to make important technology breakthroughs. Um, we're developing and offering entrepreneurial programs, such as the Invention to um, Innovation Program. And we're investing in facilities to help science commercialize their discoveries. And we heard Minister Ralston make mention of SFU Venture Labs. So I am so looking forward to seeing how we can all lean in together, work together to engage in global challenges. And again, I want to thank you, Thomas, 
for all of your team's efforts. I want to thank the SFU team as well. It is such a pleasure to be here this evening and to be co-hosting this event and helping um, to move this work forward. I can't wait to see what comes of it. So enjoy the evening, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Johnson, for your insight and, and for hosting us tonight. Before we go to the panel discussion, we'd like to thank one person particularly in this room. It's my colleague, Tamara Stanova. Tamara, she's in the back. She's in the back uh, because she's a little bit sick, so she's, she stays away from us, that's okay. But she did, she did basically all the work, uh, and thank you very much uh, for that. So now there is no one-size-fits-all solution to sus sustainability. Even in a country the small size of Switzerland, there are huge local and regional differences in the ability to generate and store renewable energy. Finding solutions to the challenges we face requires creativity. Let's explore tonight how international collaboration can expose us to new ideas and stimulate the out-of-the-box thinking and innovation that we desperately need. I would like to invite our moderator and the panelists to the fireside chat that we called Collaborate to Innovate. So let me present our moderator first. Not, not easy. <laughs> Our moderator tonight is Janet Jackson of, uh, from Foresight Cleantech Accelerator. Janet is a CEO and entrepreneur that, with broad experience in strategy, innovation, business development, marketing, and operations. At Foresight, she has led rapid growth, transform, transforming a regional organization into Canada's largest cleantech accelerator, pioneering a sectoral approach to advance cleantech innovation. Jeanette is a frequent speaker and advisor to innovators, industries, investors, and government. Jeanette also previously launched, scaled, and uh, exited two companies, and as an executive in residence with Foresight, adv advised 25-plus ventures in several markets, <laughs> including bioenergy, electric vehicles, smart buildings, water tech, robotics, and wind. I'm tired. Oh. Is that all? <laughs> I, I hope that was complete. No, thank so you. That please, was very uh, complete. panelists, uh, thank you. and I give you the floor. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right. So I believe we are the first panel to kick off this incredible innovation fest. I'm really delighted to be accompanied here by Patrick and Alicia, and they're going to introduce themselves. Of course, we can have a seat. Uh, before I pass it over to them, I want to make sure that everyone has taken a look at the first document that's going to drive the conversations over the next couple of weeks, which is, can tech save the world? And uh, the reality is, it can, but it still has a long way to go. And the way that we're going to get there is through conversations and actions that follow these conversations that are around collaboration and adoption and problem-driven innovation and all the fun things that I hope we cover today. So Jeanette Jackson, I know he read my long bio. Uh, essentially, Foresight Canada has been scaling over the last five years to become the largest clean tech sector uh, organization in the country. So we support about 500 Canadian clean tech companies per year. And more importantly is the ecosystem work around that, making sure that industry, private capital, government, academia, and all the other critical partners are at the table. Um, would love to, if, if you'd like to learn more about that, let me know, but we're going to definitely lean into what Alicia and Patrick have to bring to the table today. Um, so without further ado, Patrick, why don't you give a little intro of yourself and the work that you're doing at the Switzerland uh, Enterprise Group. Thank you very much. So I try to make a short introduction, <laughs> telling only the most important things. Yeah, um, my name is Patrick Bertschi. I'm working for Switzerland Global Enterprise. Switzerland Global Enterprise, it's the official Swiss trade promotion agency. means we are supporting Swiss companies, especially SMEs, when doing business abroad. And in the 25 most important export countries for the Swiss economy, we have subsidiaries, so-called Swiss Business Hub. And of course, one among them is in Canada. It's based in uh, Montreal and another one in the US where we also have people from 
from there here at the event. Yeah, and uh, what brings me to work to, uh, for Switzerland Global Enterprise? I don't have a background in business. I have a technical background. I've graduated at ETH Zurich at the Technical University in the fields of spatial, urban, and uh, rural planning, and worked afterwards for, uh, for engineering companies in different continents in the fields of uh, urban development. And urban development, it has to be sustainable. So this was my entry door into sustainable development and eight years ago I joined Switzerland Global Enterprise as a consultant for clean tech companies. Uh, fun fact, I love the English, but you know Switzerland has four national languages? I had the privilege of living in Geneva for a couple of uh, years and uh, it's definitely something you should know and now English is becoming the fifth, I'm going to assume. So, um, Alicia, we'd love to learn what you're up to at SFU and if you don't know Alicia Main, she does much more beyond SFU, but I know you're wearing that hat today and, and tell us what you're working on. I work full time for SFU, just to be clear. <laughs> I know her boss is in, the, is in the audience, but no, you're just very effective, so. <laughs> Thank you, Jeanette, and what, and what a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, uh, so I, I, um, my day job is as Associate Vice President of Knowledge Mobilization and Innovation at Simon Fraser University, where I'm also a Professor of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, I have a background in materials engineering as well as in innovation management and technology and policy and a little dabble in English. So put together, it makes me passionate about, you know, problem solving and innovation. And um, what I try to do and what Simon Fraser University cares deeply about is uh, trying to enable and empower researchers, both students and faculty, um, as well as our city, our region, our nation, and global researchers to try to mobilize their research to create positive social and economic change and value creation on global challenges such as climate change. And notably, our number one strategic research priority at Simon Fraser University is community-centered climate innovation. And so that is something that all eight faculties at our university uh, strive together towards to create change and to do so in collaboration with our partners locally, regionally, uh, nationally, and around the world. So what a pleasure to be here tonight to talk about uh, climate innovation and the role we can play together. Yeah. Um, we're going to dig into sort of how your roles all lead towards or connect to innovation. I just want to highlight the importance of defining innovation because, of course, when we're at a tech conference, we're thinking about, you know, patentable things, but innovation goes beyond that. It's also innovation in policy. It's innovation in services. It's innovation in the way we think about innovation and how we accelerate activity in terms of adopting all these technologies. So Patrick, why don't you tell us about your specific activities as they relate to innovation in the work that you do? Okay, yeah, as I have told in uh, my introduction, I'm supporting Swiss SMEs in the fields of clean tech when, when doing business abroad. And when can a company be competitive when it has a USP? And uh, what is the USP of a Swiss company? And I think also of a Canadian company, it's not being as cheap as possible. It's really being, have a good quality, being uh, easy to use, easy to maintain, being integrative into other solution. And what is the basis for that? It's, it's innovation. So I'm always dealing with innovative companies. Alicia, I know you've got some different programs uh, that you're leading and spearheading. In terms of innovation, how does that infiltrate all of your activities across, in the work you do and broader with SFU? Sure. Thanks for that, Jeanette. So we think about all the different ways within the, the office of the VP Research and uh, now Innovation. It was Research and International, um, uh, but International has moved within our university. Um, we think about helping researchers uh, to collaborate, to, to win large international grants, and you've heard about our growing uh, research uh, impact and, and revenue. Um, so we're recently part of Horizon Europe, so there's even more opportunity to be able to collaborate together on some of these pressing challenges. Um, so we, we try to help enable that in a variety of different ways. We also convene. We convene researchers. I note uh, that my uh, colleague here, uh, Dr. Allison Shaw, who leads our community-centered climate uh, innovation initiative, is here. She, she convenes researchers and community partners, uh, municipalities across the country 
uh, on items of, of uh, particularly low carbon resilience. I see other collaborators here in the room, uh, uh, Laura Sloboda, who's leading uh, in issues with us on our initiatives with us on getting industry together with community partners uh, and researchers to try to advance hydrogen initiatives, clean hydrogen and low cost production of, uh, of hydrogen to export around the world. And I see one of our industry partners here on that as well. So these are the kind of initiatives that I try to enable. Um, and then lastly, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later, um, education. So how does education of researchers um, and then uh, experiential education and, uh, and just-in-time education, how does it help them make more impact from their research? So I think that's a good segue into sort of the role that research can play. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, there's two things. We want, well, well, Foresight frames it as we want to help the world do more with less. When we think about sustainability, when we think about uh, economic development, you want people to be prosperous. You want to keep having the products and services that we all have grown to love, but we want to be able to do it with less inputs. And uh, there's a commercial opportunity embedded in that transaction as well. And so for you, from we'll start with you, Alicia, in terms of the research side of things, where have you seen research really start to tackle some of these climate challenges? And then, of course, Patrick, I'd love for you to weigh in as well. Yes, thanks for that, Jeanette. Well, we all saw with COVID um, how much researchers in universities and research institutes were called upon to really rise to the global challenge of coming up with vaccines, of coming up with therapeutics, of coming up with ways to adapt to a changing future. And uh, very much the same opportunity and challenge and imperative is there with climate change. So if we are, as a planet, uh, to reach net zero 2050, we have to draw on our researchers and our research. In fact, the International Energy Agency says that 50% of the technologies needed to make net zero 2050 um, are either still in research labs or not yet invented. So we have to draw together with those, uh, those uh, talents um, and, with, uh, and we also have to unite industry and academia in, in those challenges. And so policymakers play a great role. Um, uh, you know, uh, government plays a great role. But um, I would say that uh, a colleague of mine uh, here at Simon Fraser University, who's currently on sabbatical, Dr. Sarah Lubick, talks about the valley of never having lived. So forget about the valley of death. Much earlier is the valley of never having lived. And too often, our breakthrough inventions and our fantastic fundamental research doesn't actually live to be able to make significant scalable impact on global challenges such as climate change. And we can do better and we need to do better. And, and that's something that we're very passionate about trying to enable. Switzerland's very well known for some pretty advanced research. I always remember, I mean, I was there 20 years ago and they were talking about the particle um, work that was being done. How does research get embedded into some of the work that you're doing? Oh uh, yeah, so research is is the beginning of I think of of, of every product of, of every solution that yeah, at the end of the day becomes market ready and then can be really become a, a success. So uh, when I look as a as a trade promoter, it's it's always the first question: Is your product market ready before we cannot support you? But we are now more and more coming in contact with solutions that are needed and they don't exist at the moment because especially for climate change, we have so many challenges we are facing now where we don't have the solution at the moment. And there, I really like your answer that the uh, research is absolutely needed for the challenges we see and maybe for challenges they will appear in the future. I can. Can name an example? Uh, the Swiss government they want to implement a new regulation regarding the the traces of phosphorus in wastewater. So they the, the limit will go down massively, and it's not only the idea to take this phosphorus out of the water and put it anywhere, but it's the idea to make it a circular economy that the phosphorus that is coming out of the wastewater is afterwards used as a resource again. Uh, the regulation has been, should be started by 2026, but there's no solution available at the moment. So Swiss government has to postpone it, but they, had, they made the right decision now. They started now a research project with, uh, with academia, with several research institutions, with companies, with 
dealing in the fields of water treatment, in the fields of chemistry, also with an international collaboration. And hopefully within the next year, the solution will be developed. But here it was a challenge that is existing and the solution is not here. And therefore in innovation at the basic research is, is really needed. I'd like to get on the record the importance policy plays. I, I know that some of our my favorite counterparts, um, Mr. S uh, Mayor Sim and um, Minister Ralston aren't here, but they hear from me all the time. Um, but I do think that in terms of learning about some best practices and how to be ambitious but respectful of the needs of the pace that industry can move, policy and uh, those types of guidelines do set the tone at the, the pace of adoption of innovation. Um, Foresight's run over 75 innovation challenges over the last five years, and we actually just finished a challenge for the Canadian Space Agency where they were seeking technologies to basically get clean water from the moon to see if that's possible, right? So, and it's it, 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 those types of blue sky ideas we need to have the capacity and the space to explore those while still tackling those immediate early, you know, low hanging fruit opportunities, we'll call it, um, at the same time. Yeah. So I want to dig in, Patrick, with you in terms of you started to talk about collaboration and perhaps there's some unique programs or initiatives uh, within Switzerland or even broader Europe. I'm familiar with the Horizon program that are helping uh, drive collaboration and foster collaboration. Um, do you want to sort of share uh, some examples of those projects and initiatives where you've seen success uh, or perhaps opportunities for, for further collaboration and learning with us here in Canada? Of course, of course. Yeah, you, you mentioned already one of a very important uh, program. It's Horizon Europe, the program uh, from the European Union, where, but also where it's, that it's also open for non-European Union countries, such as Canada and uh, Switzerland. S SFU and Foresight are on the list. <laughs> yeah, and Switzerland as well. Of yeah, course. and uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, we have the so-called National Fonds, and this National Fonds of Research Projects, they also include several several uh, partners from industries, from academia. We have joint uh, research projects between academia and industry uh, funded by government and private and uh, private organizations. Yeah, there are, are several funds. And uh, at the moment, I can maybe uh, take another example, which I think is, is a very good collaboration that has started because I saw the poster about uh, hydrogen on, on that side. So take me this as an example. Uh, the Swiss uh, Federal Authority for the Civil Aviation has now started in a, a program for sustainable air fuel because this heavy airplanes needing a lot of power at the moment it's, it's not possible to to make them e-powered like uh, like small planes as we see here in vancouver where there is already existing an, an e-powered plane but for the big ones it's not possible and therefore switzerland started a program a research program now and it's, it's very interesting this this research program so for sustainable air fuel it's led by uh, the by the Swiss material testing agency called EMPA. It's a part of uh, ETH Zurich, but it also includes other research associations and some small companies that are that are dealing in the fields of hydrogen, green hydrogen, and also chemistry in order to find a good solution for that. And there, Switzerland is for even forced to work together internationally because we won't have the capacity to produce this amount of green hydrogen in our country ourselves and therefore there there will be pilot plans not only in Switzerland but also in other countries. I cannot tell that it will be Canada at the first choice because we are looking for sunny countries there. <laughs> More in the Middle East uh, will be the favorites. Oman is one example. What, you think there's no sunshine there? <laughs> <laughs> yesterday and today, yesterday it was. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, in, in the development, uh, I see green hydrogen, it's it's a hype at the moment and therefore a stronger international collaboration between different nations, between different universities. I think this is the future as well. Alicia, I, I'd want you to weigh in, but I do want to highlight something really important I found in, in just Patrick's uh, comments here. You don't need to collaborate just for the sake of collaborating. It's okay to 
pick where collaboration can actually work for you and have impact. It's, it, you know, we only have so much time, we only have so many resources. And so um, I'm trying to learn the, the skill of discernment. It's not one of my strengths. I, I love to do everything all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't do it all. So how do we work together to pool those resources and share technologies and learn from each other so we, we can get to the end game faster. But Alicia, I know you've got lots of, of ideas and things that are in motion around collaboration as well. Yeah, let, let me just build on the green hydrogen um, uh, thread at the moment, because I do think between Canada and Switzerland, we both, uh, and certainly here in British Columbia, um, you know, we, we both rely on a lot on hydroelectric um, uh, power, and so that's a great uh, uh, complement to, uh, to what we're calling low carbon intensity hydrogen. Um, and, uh, um, you know, here in um, British Columbia, it was mentioned earlier in one of the announcements that you know, uh, a great deal of the Global Clean Tech 100 in Canada is here from the West Coast and, and seven of those 13 from here in British Columbia. And one of them's here in the room here. Ben, could you put your hand up? So this is uh, Ben Britton, a uh, founder and, and um, of Ionomer, co-founder of Ionomer uh, Innovation. One of the Global Clean Tech 100 come out of, uh, they spun out of the chemistry research lab of Stephen Holdcroft at uh, Simon Fraser University. And they are, um, it's that collaboration upstream in the, in the value chain that we're using to try to um, collab uh, convene and create low cost de-risking of the full solutions as well as their adoption by communities, right? So that may well be, even despite some occasional rain, it may well be a, a reason for, uh, for collaboration. And uh, one of the panels that'll be later in, in, the, uh, in the Swiss Innovation Fest series will be uh, my colleague, uh, Laura Sloboda, will be talking further about that. Um, so I, I do think that there are some areas where there could be real natural strength, and that's one of them where research is essential because you know right now to get down to the costs where that can really be viable, um, you know, there's, there's still a ways to go. And yet the solutions uh, are there and being advanced and they just need to be de-risked uh, at scale with companies and with adoption. Um, and the integrated marketplace that Minister Ralston brought up too is also an initiative here in BC where we're trying to uh, de-risk solutions and, and use public procurement as a way to make it happen. And I just wanted to highlight one other um, uh, because I see a colleague of mine from our uh, School of Sustainable Energy Engineering here, Professor Sammy Khan, and uh, that is a really unique um, uh, school within engineering that uh, Simon Fraser University is really proud of. We've just uh, graduated our first class of sustainable energy engineers, or they're graduating this spring. And uh, it's not beholden to the fossil fuel industry, right? So it's not chemical engineering. It's sustainable energy engineering. And so there's a great opportunity for research, for student exchange, for collaboration on what could an unbounded uh, solution look like. Um, so just uh, to offer that up as an area for collaboration. I know there's some fabulous, fabulous research institutes in Switzerland, and you know we have partnerships with some of them, but I'm just trying to tell you about some of the things that we could offer. I'd love to dig into this a little bit more because I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Venn diagrams, and I'm, I, I've researched some of Switzerland's largest uh, economic drivers and how that parallels some of Canada's largest economic drivers. Um, it was actually for com other competitive analysis, but it happens to apply to our conversation today because I'm looking at Canada's GDP and we import more than we export still, whereas Switzerland is a bit of a different economy. They export more than they import. And so what are different strategies and tactics we can do to, to, to improve that? And so when I think about the Venn diagram of Switzerland and Canada, I see things like chemicals and manufacturing and um, there's just some, I think, some opportunities for significant collaboration there. When I hear you talk about um, say SAF or um, you know sustainable aviation fuels, I know that you know part of that integrated marketplace opportunity is to start to deploy pilots and test in a safe space, but uh, industrial space where it's actually a real life application, you know, some of the technologies that are, are available. I'm wondering if you've thought about, I mean, I know there's lots of signage up and over the next couple of weeks, you're going to be presenting different technologies and we're going to be showcasing and we're going to have big high fives and elbow taps. But in addition to that, are there a few specific areas of interest where we could really start to lean in on some of the challenges that we face? So clean tech's a big problem, climate's a big problem. Have any sort of ideas come to mind specific to industry? Yeah, of course. I would say there are not only few. There, there are a lot. So I, I like it. I, 
I only have three day experience of Vancouver now, but when I open my eyes here as a, uh, with my background as an urban planner, I, I already see things where uh, a collaboration is absolutely could be a good thing if we look outside about public transport. I really like the public transport system of Vancouver. That is that is similar to Switzerland with these trolley buses, with trains, with tramways, and it's existing in both countries. But I think all so existing things can be innovated, can be improved, has to be developed. So uh, a collaboration in the fields of uh, smart transport solutions, then uh, being in a hotel with a window that is nor, not very thick and a little bit of cold comes out, comes in from outside or a little bit more cold. cold. Uh, I think the whole topic of uh, building system, insulation, engineer, uh, energy uh, st uh, storage and energy management in buildings. It, it goes further when we're talking about the renewal of the city, about circular economy in building materials, which is a big topic, especially for uh, for, for big cities. Uh, yeah, this, and th this is only in the city. And uh, I made a trail run uh, yesterday. And being out, then I also, s also see the, the things outside. Um, there is about the, the development of rural regions, regions that are not have not a lot of settlement, but they need services as well. So how to make a cost efficient, but also very good and energy efficient solutions for that regions. It's also about transport. It's about settlement. It's about social services. Um, yeah, and then it, it really brings us Again, also to, to the whole nature, we have some companies here in the Can Tech Save the World exhibition that are presented in the fields of, of agriculture. Agriculture for me becomes more and more a clean tech topic. It needs a lot of resources, but it's very important for us for uh, bringing enough food for us. So having, us, uh, having enough efficient technologies in the fields of irrigation, in the fields of uh, soil protection, for me, clean tech as well, and uh, bad news from Switzerland. We had now during that winter around 20 people died in in avalanches because there was so much snow this winter. For me, also, it's it's not only from natural. We it, had a bit of a different <laughs> lens, but yeah, so we had no snow, but it, it it's like cycles, right? Like yeah. one year, it's more than ever, and the next year, there's none, right? And that's why we're transitioning from global warming to climate change. It's just that unpredictability, right? Absolutely. And Switzerland was the same. Last winter, almost no snow. And now a lot of snow with a lot of dead people in avalanches. So avalanches in both countries and snow, a big topic. Intelligent system for, for weather forecast, for protection against all kinds of natural resources, I think. So we have seen it's not only few, it's a lot of topics. I love it. I love it. Alicia, do you have a couple of things? I know we've only got a couple of minutes here. Yeah, I would say all of the above. We have researchers on lots of those topics. They're fantastic. Um, uh, I would also add, um, I'm going to toot our horn a little bit here, but I would say that, it, it, that um, SFU has been ranked uh, number one in the world this year in uh, sustainable cities. So that's out of the, the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings. And so certainly uh, Vancouver's done a fabulous job, but there's also research going on here and researchers into thinking about how to make cities even more sustainable, that, uh, that there's opportunities for collaboration. And um, I, I also wanted to uh, highlight, you know, the incredible research institutions uh, in, in, in Switzerland uh, that we would like to work with, right, uh, uh, on different types of exchanges to, you know, to the, to the answer to the question, can tech save the world? I would say necessary but insufficient. Right, that we, we need the social sciences research, we need the ethics research, and we need the early stage innovation skills, entrepreneurial capability amongst researchers to be able to make the decisions that can help them get past the valley of never having lived. And so I think that's an area for collaboration with ETH Zurich, fantastic university, with EP, uh, um, EPFL or EPF Lausanne, um, where uh, my colleague Mark Gruber uh, was the head of um, uh, the vice president of innovation and, and of the innovation park and is now the editor in chief of AMG, uh, AMJ. 
um, you know, with St. Gallen, who has really innovative management research with the University of Basel. Um, all of those universities, there's room for, for great collaboration. And one of the mechanisms that, um, that uh, President Johnson mentioned earlier and that we're going to innovate with this year with Innovation Fest is uh, having some uh, students from those institutions uh, in, engaged in our national network of invention to innovation researchers in that educational program and uh, looking as that one way of bringing those, those researchers together, um, making an early stage skills and having something that is asynchronous that can reach across nations um, and can get researchers together to think about uh, those big audacious solutions to climate change. I see an opportunity over the next couple of weeks to define some challenges and pool some industry together and get some horizon funding and hopefully kind of mobilize some of these uh, activities forward. We don't have time for questions, but please come in to someone. Yeah, I see. Um, uh, yeah, we're talkers apparently, um, but connect with Alicia and, and Patrick offline. Um, but before we go, definitely want to hear one key takeaway that you hope uh, to share with the audience today. Um, Patrick? I think you've already told it. It's the word share. Share your ideas, share your intentions, then good ideas come together, as we have seen today. Uh, it, it was not pre-discussed the topics we had, or only a few, but uh, the fields of collaboration, they really were created now, and I think this is the basis for all innovation. Share your ideas with other, talk with other, make working groups, and then there will be good results in innovation. Alicia? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and I would say again, uh, can tech save the world? Necessary, but insufficient. Uh, we really do need uh, to collaborate and we need to be thinking about uh, interdisciplinarity and, uh, and collaboration across nations and across academics and industry. So looking forward to the discussions this evening and, uh, and thank you for, for joining tonight. And my takeaway is please do one personal and one business thing to help make your organization or business more sustainable. And hopefully, collectively, that will lead to big impact. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope you all have a great uh, night of networking. So thank you very much to the moderator and the panelists. And I have a little token of appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you so much. It's a workshop. Talk about Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. And for this really interesting and inspiring conversation and i think we can say it's safe to say that collaborate to innovate is really the path forward um, i'm glad that um, we could really talk about it and i would also like to highlight uh, our exhibition in the back uh, the exhibition is about the question can tech save the world and I'm also happy that one of the companies that is highlighted in the exhibition, Wingtra, is actually present here with, uh, with their drone. And one representative from the company is also here. So if you have questions about the drone and what this drone can do, you can uh, talk um, to the representative of Wingtra. So let me quickly share our programs, the highlights of the few uh, next weeks. So on Thursday on April 4th, we, we will gather at the Center for Dialogue for the Smart and Sustainable Cities panel to discuss the path to net zero within city premises. The panel will also be live streamed. Then on April 3rd, 4th and 5th, our smart city experts, Professor Vicente Carabias and Christy Schala, the Innovation Commissioner of the Swiss Business Hub in Washington, will will be teaching a series of four guest lectures to students at UBC and SFU. This March and April, actually, we are offering a total of eight guest lectures and seminars at academic institutions in Western Canada as part of the FEST. On April 9th and, 11th, uh, 9th and 11th, in collaboration with Foresight Canada, Volition, ESM Arts and Culture, and EPFL Innovation Park. EPFL is the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. 
So the Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne Innovation Park, we will be offering a series called Bringing Swiss Cleantech Startups to Canada. Swiss Cleantech tar Startups and SMEs to learn about the Canadian market. Develop the Canada-specific Canada pitch in an interactive workshop and present their solutions to Canadian in investors and the public. On April 11th, our partner, VIF, Vancouver International Film Festival, uh, at the center will be screening the Swiss documentary called The Value of Things by Tobias Luxinger. And I encourage you really to, to join this Canadian premiere of the film in person or from the comfort of your home from April 24 to 28 at the online screening offered as part of the Swiss Film Club. So April 11, live at WIF. On April 16, tune in for our online panel discussion, a Swiss-Canadian dialogue on decarbonization, uh, where we bring together experts from leading Swiss and Canadian university as, uh, universities, SFU, University of Victoria, ETH Zurich, Paul Scherer Institute, and EPFL Lausanne. And we will be back in the fall with an event in Calgary, Alberta, and with the first clean tech cohort of Swiss PhD students joining the Invention to Innovation cohort organized by Simon Fraser University in partnership, uh, partnership with MyTax. Please check our website, innovationfest net for further and detailed information and we have also some flyers on the table um, and you can talk to us if you have questions about the fest thank you for joining us tonight and now please enjoy the reception and have a nice rest of the evening thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>